So I'm going to give you a short talk, a non-technical talk, um, about my experience teaching university students about self-publishing and trying to reflect that to be uh, as in terms of contributing to WordPress and trying to reflect that into the meaning of the um, democratized publishing. Um, so um, my introduction was was already said, so I'm going to skip most of this. But the um, the just a note is that I um, haven't had a career to be a teacher. I had no intention to be a teacher. Um, always had an interest in education as I work in the at the university. Um, so I'm actually a staff. Um, and and how did I go to teach? Well. This is photo from World Camp Tokyo 2017. I was uh, involved as a, as a and I won the organizer, and I'm here doing MCing at English speaking session tracks. Yes, we have that kind of track. And a guy at the bottom left hand corner with straw hat happened to be someone that I know, uh, senior Watanabe, who is art professor at uh, Tempo University Japan campus. We know each other for maybe six, seven years, but he knew nothing that I'm so involved with WordPress and my exp expertise level of WordPress. At the end of all of this, he asked me, would you be interested in teaching? Um, there's an art class which involves WordPress. I thought, really? Is it, there isn't such a class? Uh, I said, yeah. And, and then, well, after a few discussions and some paperwork and things, I got an offer to co-teach with him in summer for the, for the summer, semester of summer 2018. A uh, class called Internet Imaging, and uh, a course number starts with art, so you can say that's an art course. The, the first paragraph is a quote, straight quote from um, syllabus, and it's, in, it's written in very academic way, so I'm not going to you know, read it out. But basically what it means is um, students will learn what and how um, online self-publication is done. Um, the main scope of this is because our student is promote their artwork, so i.e. portfolio. But we wanted them to think beyond that, you know, just, just being, beyond just being a portfolio. And we don't expect them to be a developer. Uh, we don't going to teach to that level. But we wanted them to learn and have a, you know, just have, even have a grasp and idea of the technical aspects of things, particularly related to images, like even simple stuff like you put up. High quality images, it looks beautiful, but it's going to take years to load the page and that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm going to share four of my experiences first. One, and this is more of my, uh, come from my inexperiences um, with teaching students, the younger generation particularly, because I had a conception that, well, they'll be. You know, they grew up in the age of all this internet and web devices, everything, and they'll be comfortable with the web. Yes, they were. They'll probably do fine with running maybe HTML, CSS, semantics uh, to the like very the basic fundamental level, um, and they were okay. But CSS right, layout, they'll find it very difficult. But then most of the people do, right? It's pretty confusing. Um, they're reasonably aware of security risks. I mean that by I say to them. 20 times, don't use the same password for everything. And they, remember, they know what that means. You know, they, they, they're pretty fine to understand what that means. Or more like they use that for many passwords, and um, they kind of got lost to which password they were which. Um, but they found the programming to be difficult. And this is a level like one of the tasks for them was to make a child theme. So the base, the, this is like that, those one line or the three lines of PHP code you have to write in the child theme to roll the lot to roll the parent themes style sheet. Some people were very confused, even with just that. So it reminded me that well, okay, pro programming is another s couple steps above of, uh, of writing just basic HTML, CSS. It's pretty obvious to maybe those who teach it. Second point, customers is great. Um, <laughs> there was one class that I went through some option setting, and I was going to go through some customizer setting and stuff, but ran out of time. And um, I asked them to have a look at themselves so I can go over the details in the next class. Come next class, well, I didn't need to go any details because they found it was very easy to use, intuitive. They found everything. And like 
um, terminology like widget, which in my experience, you have to explain to people, for example, it was in the meetups, what the widgets mean. But, but one of the students said it's pretty much self-explanatory. It's you know, fine. Um, so like, if you're like a veteran um, developer, a community person, you go to the meetups and world camps and you talk to everyone, and so we call the community. Um, you ask about customizers and how they use them, and they say, oh, the customizer, no, no, I don't want to use customizer. <laughs> or um, we only use it for the first time, you know, when we install the site, so we don't really spend time on it. But then I think it kind of reminds me it's often overlooked how helpful this feature is. Now, we didn't really need a, we didn't really have time to go through Gutenberg in our semester, but this, I just have to make a quick quote from David Bissett. Um, who I, gave, I believe gave a, a talk called Gutenberg and Use at WorldCamp, uh, a recent WorldCamp, I'm not quite sure. Um, basically, it's a similar conclusion here, saying that um, these younger ones tend to uh, favor Gutenberg in a positive light. And I just thought that's very similar to my finding with customizer and newer generations. And in the light of that 5.0 is now out, uh, it would be interesting to see what this new generation really finds this uh, user interface. The three points, uh, third point, university is internationally diverse. Um, this depends on which university it is that you look at it, I think. But I had some students in my class. Amongst them, they can communicate in five or more languages, which is pretty impressive, I think. Um, and there just happened to be a, a translation contribution day at local WordPress meetup, that's meetup uh, Tokyo. And uh, we advised them to ha you know, have a, we didn't make them, but we advised them to have a, you know, come and join, see how things are working, how, what we do and stuff. And some of them did, six of them did actually. And, um, and it's very interesting because we, she's teaching her about the codex and, and how to translate with the polyglot on the interface. And then you get a question like, can I translate from Japanese to Taiwanese? And then Taiwanese to Japanese. But at the moment, you can only translate from English to Japanese or English to Taiwanese. Um, that kind of perspective never really occurred to me. And even I've been around for 10 years. Um, if that can be possible, then maybe me, more people could join to translate, perhaps, maybe. Um, also, we talked to a Japanese uh, professor. She, um, she said they're always looking for opportunities to put opportunities for students, um, like in students, students to put their language skill that they learned into practice. You know. And now, a translation like this could really be uh, perhaps you know, it's something that they could work, work on. Sorry. So uh, my thought from here is that if you want to do this kind of translation contribution day at, meet, at local meetup, um, have a look at your local universities. It might be quite internationally diverse. Uh, last point is inspire them, inspiration. So we had four guest lecturers in our class. And um, you know, WordPress community has many life-changing personal stories. Um, uh, yeah, the, your e-commerce site went up by 10%, or your company site went up by, access went up by 120% or something. Yeah, yeah so that's great too. But you have personal stories like how self-publishing and your, perhaps uh, your activity in the community have changed their lives, um, have changed their careers. Um, and also, um, for example, Fumiki, who's on, on this photo here, he's a, is actually a core uh, contributor, and he's a developer. But he, wants, he always wanted to be a novelist. So outside his work, um, uses things like WordPress um, to publish his own uh, literature work. And he always think about how he can monetize all this and trying to think about how one click you can make it Amazon Kindle and sell it and whatever. That kind of story, um, students were really, really interested in that kind of story. How um, to monetize things, to earn things, to get extra earning perhaps, and how that can help with their careers. Um, because these students uh, were um, going to graduate in maybe a year or two years' time, and they start thinking about what to do next with their careers. And so, you know, like technical aspects is fine too, but like 
how that can tie up with your near future career and life. I think they were very, very interested in this. And there are a lot of questions um, that were asked. Um, and they asked it in Japanese, which I was very, very surprised that they could all communicate in Japanese very well. <laughs> and I had no Japanese students in the class too. So I would, finally, I would like to uh, somehow reflect that too, in terms of contribution. Um, in a way, because I, I've been thinking about what does the meaning of the democratized publishing mean for about this around the year. Just, just my personal thinking, really. Um, we were going to use WordPress um, uh, from, right from the beginning, but we did ask ourselves hard, is it really the suitable choice for publishing platform to teach online self-publishing? Because you know, nowadays there are so many different tools, apps, uh, open source, proprietary, um, different technologies. You know, so many choices there for that student might find easy to use or better to use. And then there's like uh, mobile phone devices that change everything the way you interact with your life, uh, your life with your with the internet, and uh, take away the barriers of time and places. Um, so I mean, I only did this for semester, so I can't really say yes, that was the right choice. But then both senior, the core teacher, and I agreed that it's it. I think it was a, a quite suitable choice. Um, I'm not only saying that because I'm speaking at WorldCamp, but really, um, I tend to think um, WordPress is like a crossroads of different web technology and cultures. Um, so you can start with WordPress, but you can go into different areas. You can learn about front-end development, back-end development, software development, not only technical stuff, but like marketing, uh, writing, uh, editing, and also um, internet culture as well because of how, um, the, because of the maturity of this WordPress community. And um, you can also learn about um, how to do online co collaboration internationally to make something on, you know, on the web. And so we think it was, you know, it was, I think it was quite a good choice to, to use WordPress. And I would like to somehow uh, reflect that in terms of democratized publishing is something that one interpretation that I kind of came up with is this. If use of WordPress has a role in education for students to be introduced, study, and to get inspired about self-publishing, then isn't this democratized publishing? And that's regardless of you know, whether students continue to keep using WordPress or not. And a couple of years later, they might find that um, different tools are better suited for life or they might find that the self-publishing isn't really the cup of their tea, you know? But uh, it, it's okay. The, it's something, web and interaction with web and self-publishing is something that younger one needs to, will be exposed in their life, in future life. So if WordPress has some kind of role in introducing them about that, and that's, I do feel that's, you know, that's pretty good in self. Um, and that's my conclusion. Thank you very much. So we do have time for one question, and one question only. I see in the back someone jump up, so you're the lucky question asker today. Hello, thank you. Uh, do you have any plans to recreate the course in an online environment? An online environment? Online course. Uh, no, not at the moment. Um, I'm planned to, I'm actually scheduled to co teach this again in next year's summer semester. Um, the reason why I'm not doing this semester, next semester is all to do with like uh, admission, administration of the university stuff is detailed. But yeah, no, not, not the online stuff, no. I'm, I'm not quite sure whether um, um, the main campus, the Temple University, uh, offers any of it, but I'd, I'm not, no, no problem. All right, thank you very much. One more big applause for Toru. Thank you. Uh, also, can, can I just say one thing? Yes, you can. Um, so if anyone's interested to come to like Japan World Camp next year, or I don't, I don't know if anyone's planning at the moment, to be honest, but you know, get connected. And I hope you can come to Japan one day. <laughs> Ray just taught us how to do that, so. Go talk to him. <laughs>